Robert Sandel and Mark Russell. Hello, tonight we feature a session with the band Rothko, who are playing with the pianist and composer Roger Eno. It was the first time they'd worked together, and we think they came up with something rather special. Around that we have CDs by Fogg, Kevin Blechtum, Mahogany Throttle, Mukta, and the Norwegian band formerly known as Jager Jazzist. And we begin with Nitin Sawney. What a man! Playwright, DJ, composer of everything from film soundtracks to classical scores for the City of Birmingham Symphony Orchestra, and, I learned recently, a former member of the James Taylor Quartet. Well, his new album, Filter, is his seventh, and this track features his mum reading a poem in Hindi, a Bollywood soundtrack star by the name of Rena Badwaj, and some great blues vocal courtesy of a guy called Fink. Shades of little acts in the me uh, blues inflection of that track, although of course there's plenty more in it. That's Nitin Sawney, a track from his new album, Filter. That one's called Dead Man. I know you weren't too happy with the um, rhythmic accompaniment to that, Mark. Well, it reminded me slightly of that Moby album of a few years ago where he'd sampled all those blues vocalists and stuck them over beats and backings. I thought it was a bit like that. The, the bit I did like best were the Indian strings and vocals. That track's not overly representative of an album which actually covers a lot of styles, but what I like about it is the way it just lays these two things side by side and doesn't actually try and mix them at all, it just puts them there. Now, Aliatri Grammar is a duet. Danish composer and musician Jakob Draminski Hoymark uh, provides the backdrop of weird electro sounds, and the American trumpeter Mark Cunningham, now a resident of Barcelona, blows over the top. Their new album is a series of improvisations recorded live in the studio. It's called ABC ED Minded, and this is how it opens a funky and frankly frothy little number called HKG.
That was Aleatory Grammar. The album's called ABCED Minded, and uh, they are a duo of Jakob Draminski Heimark and Mark Cunningham, a trumpeter that I think we came across, or at least we came across his music when we went to Barcelona a few years ago. I must say, Mark, that's my sort of jazz band. Nothing too intimidating in the way of technique going on there, and uh, you know, I think I could have uh, handled some of that laptop stuff that old Jakob was uh, putting out. Yeah, it's one of those pieces that um, is difficult to believe is improvised. It seemed to have a very sort of structured groove to it and a nice sort of theme that went across it and, and the rest of the album is very much like this it's, it's very well thought out even though it's spontaneous now to our special session ages ago we asked mark beasley of rothko you know the three bass guitar trio to come in and do a session how about doing it with someone else we suggested i'll think about it mark replied weeks later he said he'd like to play with roger eno pianist and composer they just played on the same bill together at a gig more about that later in our interview so, Rothko, in their current incarnation of Mark Beasley and Michael Donnelly on bass guitars and Ben Page on keyboards and percussion, turned up at our Maida Vale studios. So did Roger Eno, fresh off a train from Suffolk. They had nothing prepared at all. They chatted and noodled around a bit. Listen to the Bode Glockenspiel on this track, played by Ben Page. Anyway, when they got down to it, they recorded this, separate. <laughs> Thank you. 
That was the first piece in our session with Rothko and Roger Eno. It was called Separate, and um, two more tracks from them later on in the programme. A curious silence fell in the mixing it office as we took in the new double album by Yaga, which is the name previously belonging to Yaga Jazzist. The new album's called What We Must, and the Norwegian ten-piece we know have covered a lot of ground since they began their jazz odyssey 11 years ago, including dance, funk and electro, and in fact the last time we caught up with them on the sticks they were dabbling in hardcore electronics but what's this? Yaga in rock apparently, with the guitars and drums turned up to 11 and the horns providing a dense weave of background noise it's big, bombastic, uplifting and sort of hilarious I think
Phew, rock and roll. That's um, Yaga. At least I think they're called Yaga because uh, in one part of the CD sleeve it says Yaga, on another part it says Yaga Jazzist. So maybe they're just suspending the Jazzist part of their name to mark this uh, sudden detour into rock. And uh, if you think that's a rocking track, you should hear some of the other stuff on it. They actually sound to me at various points as if they're trying to take off U2. <laughs> I have to say, I quite like this CD. I mean, it reminded me a bit of Tortoise's last one, It's All Around You, which was quite sort of bombastic. I think this is nicer. So I, I found their last album, which was called The Sticks, it was sort of slightly bland in a jazzy noodly way this at least has got some balls to it well they certainly seem to be trying to kind of attack the audience much more i mean i suppose the problem with a band like this who are phenomenally talented soloists and virtuoso musicians in their own right is that you can become a bit introverted in your approach and they're certainly not that on this album although there are some tracks it's a double cd there are some tracks on the other cd which remind me of some of the uh, the gentler stuff that uh, we've heard from them recently maybe they've rediscovered king crimson yeah, well, maybe it's the drugs they're taking. Now, sticking with our uh, Norwegian theme, here's Hannah Huckelberg, who's a, uh, a Norwegian singer in the sort of Stina Nordenstam mould. Breathy, close-miked vocals over unusual instrumental settings are her thing, um, usually featuring acoustic instruments blended with subtle electronics. We actually played a track from this same album, which was released in Europe last year. Uh, it's going to be released here for the first time in a couple of weeks. So here's another track. It's called Cast Anchor. It's actually the title track. It's a sort of off-kilter lullaby, extolling the virtues of hedonism. <laughs> search to go sailing leaving the shore in a boat of wood sailing sailing on all alone I will cast anchor a place where it's calm and stay for a while I sit back and wonder how things are are singing I will cast anchor a place where it's calm and stay for a while and I'll sit back and wonder how things are down under and smile
Well, the promo notes helpfully tell me that you pronounce her name Hannah Huckelberg. So that was who it was, uh, with a track from her soon-to-be-released album Cast Anchor, which is coming out on the Leaf label. Yeah, it's quite a Scandinavian theme to this programme, and uh, we're continuing it. We started with Yaga Jazzist, and we continue in the same vein now with Shining, a local offshoot of the Yaga Collective who followed them down the road to rock. Shining's third album is provocatively titled In the Kingdom of Kitsch, You Will Be a Monster. And it apparently reflects leader Jürgen Munkerby's adolescent enthusiasm for bands such as Pantera, Sapultera and Death. Well, you'd never guess, on this track anyway, that he also grew up listening to John Coltrane and Jan Garbarek, though you can tell that something very clever indeed has upset the raucous certainties of metal. Hold on tight. Shining, and a track called Perdurabo from their wonderfully titled album In the Kingdom of Kitsch, You Will Be a Monster, which is out on the admirable Runa Gramophone label. I love that track. There were distinct um, touches, I thought, of the uh, Mahavishnu Orchestra in their mid-70s glory there. Yeah, it did have that sort of uh, prog rock kind of feel to it. I really like the distorted vocals. I thought it was very sort of very cleverly put together. Now, here's an interesting world combo. Mukhtar were formed in 1994 by a French jazz bassist called Simon Marie, who had a thing about Indian classical music. In 2003, Marie led his band on a concert tour of India, where he met up with the Sarod master Biswajit Roy Chowdhury, and lo, a wondrous chemistry took effect, which resulted in an album, Havali. And this isn't as polite a fusion of East and West as it may sound. Well, you can tell those guys were getting on well. That was uh, Mukta, who on that occasion was Simon Marie on bass, 
Geoffroy Tamizier, trumpet, Pascal van den Bulk on flute, Jean Chevalier on bass clarinet, gong percussion, Olivier Conga, rather appropriately, on congas, bongos, shakers and percussion, and Michel Guy on sitar. And they were playing with uh, Biswajit Roy Chowdhury, who's uh, apparently a master Indian sarod player. I thought it was a very successful fusion, that. Mm. And in a short space of time, it seemed to go through all the different moods that a very long Indian piece might go through. I liked it when it got frenetic at the end. It is very taut, and it has quite a lot of impact. I think the trouble with a lot of these uh, sort of fusions of, East, of Indian classical music and Western styles is that they come across as rather easy listening. It's almost like sort of high-class elevator music, but there's nothing of that of this in this uh, album. Thoroughly recommended, Mukhtar, and the album is called Haveli. Right, now it's time for my favourite band name of the week, Mahogany Throttle. Just let me say that again, Mahogany Throttle. Anyway, the Mahogs, or maybe it's the Throts, are the classic American three-piece, guitar, bass and drums, and they're surprisingly modest about their instrumental endeavours. Band member David J. White emailed us, Thank you for showing interest in what we do. We have worked very hard to create a music that is suitable for car travel and a variety of workplace scenarios. Oh, David, come on, it's much better than that. The most recent album, Traverse, is positively rocking. Ingenious rock, I'd call it. Anyway, have a go at dancing to this. Having trouble walking. Short and very sweet, Mahogany Throttle, Having Trouble Walking, from their most recent album, which they recorded a couple of years ago, called Traverse, on the Sioux Train Recording Company. And they are Brent Allen Budsberg, bass, John C. Gleisner the third drums, and David J. White on guitars. And uh, they say it was recorded vertically, whatever that is. <laughs> um, yeah, this is an album I really like. It's all very, very similar to that. It's sort of, um, I suppose it's post-rock. Kind of thing, but what well, they're, they're very good players. And when I first heard that, 
the reason why I made the reference to dancing was I thought this is in a very odd time signature. And actually, when you count it out, it's just very syncopated 4-4. Four, four. And listen, as I can tell you, he was counting it out in 4-4 four, four for the first minute, at least, of that track. Just, just to checking make, that they didn't Just to make stray. sure that he'd got it right. There's this kind of... Um, I hadn't noticed this before, but there's a sort of guitar prog uh, theme emerging in this programme, Mark, don't you think? Yeah, it sounds like it. It's, it's not uh, intentional. Um, now, it's hard not to feel some grudging respect, at least, for a woman who calls herself Kevin. I speak, as many of you will have guessed, of Kevin Blechdom now a solo artist living in Berlin who's about to release her second album Eat My Heart Out. Whoever said that she puts songs together like Lego were right on the money here. The music is willfully fragmented, wildly eclectic and in many ways utterly mad. But as a soundtrack to those moments we all feel from time to time when nothing makes sense and that's okay because sense is an overrated commodity in our mostly sensible lives Eat My Heart Out brings much needed relief. <laughs> And you are not here, you are there, and I am not there, so we are not together right now. I hope we'll be together again, so I'll wait for some understanding. Close my eyes, I feel everywhere. Close your eyes, you are everywhere. I forget, I forget, I forget that there are other people. Tweedy Bird sounds at the end of that track. That was two items from the new Kevin Blechdom album. It's called Eat My Heart Out. Those two tracks were There Are Other People and then Johnny. And it's on uh, Chicks on Speed Records. That second track, which reminded me a lot of The Residents, reminded me also that um, Kevin Blechdom used to be at Mills College in San Francisco, where, of course, The Residents are 
near neighbours. Aha. Uh-huh. I think it's a very cleverly put together album in that it sounds deliberately ramshackle, but it, it must have taken absolutely ages organising this and sort of recording those large stacks of vocals. And um, there was a spoof of The Who's rock opera Tommy in there. Before you write in and tell us? Yeah, I mean, it references so many things. It's... Um, it's amazingly well organised, I think. Yes, uh, a word of warning about the cover. It's a slightly startling picture of um, Kevin Blackdom um, naked from the waist up with a lot of uh, offal on her chest. And uh, I wouldn't show that to your children if I were you. Time now for our main slab of session and interview with Rothko and Brian Eno. Rothko are Mark Beasley and Michael Donnelly bass guitar and Ben Page keyboards and percussion. And Roger Eno plays piano, mini disc atmospheres and BBC standard issue Celeste. And uh, while I remember, Roger mentioned that today is actually his birthday. So happy birthday, Roger. I must say I enjoyed sitting at the back of the Maida Vale studio doing the Times crossword with you. Must do it again sometime. Anyway, here's Rothko with Roger Eno and an improvisation called Cylinder.
That was Cylinder, an improvisation by Rothko and Roger Eno, uh, which they made especially for their Mixing It session recorded a couple of weeks ago. And at the end of the session, I spoke to Roger Eno and Rothko's Mark Beasley, and I asked them how they met. Um, well, we played on the same bill at the Spitz in London in December, and we met then backstage, or upstairs as it is there. And um, I thought we became you know, almost, well, for me personally, almost instant friends. And uh, I heard when I saw Roger play his set, um, it's the first time I've actually been moved by anyone playing piano on st for a long, Gosh, long time. that's really sweet of you. It's the truth. When you played that Lament, it was just the, one of the best things I'd heard in, by a musician anywhere for a long time. I don't get sort of moved often at, at shows, especially live. But for, the, for me, that was quite special. What made you think that you could do something together, like, in this, in this session? The second I heard Roger play like that, for me, was I thought I'd, I'd really want to do something with, with this man. I listened to some of Mark's recordings, and I thought it would be easy because he's... Um, what I like in music often is humility, which isn't, you know, I'm not... A, I don't like the idea of sort of um, shouting all the time. And he's not a shouter. That's what I was interested in. So how did you, Roger, how did you prepare for this session? What did you bring along? And what, what did you imagine you were going to be doing? Well, I, I, I tried not to imagine anything, which is quite easy for me, actually, because I'm very limited in that area. <laughs> I bought a mini disc, which I'd had... I'd, I'd, when I play live, I often have um, atmospheres, which, which ever so nice, because it means I don't have to play very much and I can sit down and... Um, drink beer well looking like I'm doing something so I brought that along which allows a backdrop which I thought might be handy because if there is ice to be broken that's the way to do it it makes it easier if there's something already to work on and um, a very cunning machine called a Proteus which I programmed and fiddled around with for a few years which fits into a flight case because I don't like carrying things around and you're also playing the piano in the Celeste, which oh, are in the right. studio. <laughs> I notice you, you're clutching a notebook as well, which you've re referred to at various times. What yeah. have you got in there? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> I've been keeping these since I was uh, about 17, which is a long time ago now. So I've got a chest full of them. And most of it is embarrassing nonsense. So I won't tell you any of it. Mark, how did, how did you prepare for this? I, and perhaps you should tell us about the other members of Rothko today as well. OK, we've got uh, Michael Donnelly playing bass and... Ben Page on keyboards and percussion. Michael's been playing with me now for about, it must be four years, and Ben on and off for about the same amount of time. So is this a, a permanent Rothko incarnation? It's a hopefully a permanent Rothko incarnation, yeah. It has been for the last um, nine months now. Um, we, we go out as a full band with the, Ben's brother Tom on drums, and it's been, been going really well lately. OK, well, today's session, did you come with anything prepared? We met on Wednesday, Michael, Ben and myself, and we had a chat about doing something that was like something that would unfold gradually. And uh, that was the only way we prepared, really. Nothing else. And, I mean, we're talking after the recording now. How, how did it actually work? How did you actually start each number? I mean, did someone... Slowly. <laughs> did someone say, right, let's do this kind of thing? Or did it just... Did you play around and it evolved? It was great that Roger brought the the atmospheres in because that was a real icebreaker for the first for the first track it brought us into the into the day really well because it gives you like a something firm to grasp hold of when you first start playing and that was a real help and from there i don't know we i think we developed almost an instant style between the four of us i say it's you know it's much easier for me with you know michael and ben sort of we know each other we play together regularly but i think i was i'm, I'm very impressed how the, the way things just gelled almost instantly I, I thought that they would, you know, I was, I was really confident that, that, that it would work straight from the off. Uh, I just had a good feeling about the whole, the whole day. More collaborations in the future? It's we're playing at a festival, aren't we? Oh, we are. We're doing the Big Chill. We're playing at the Big Chill in August. Somebody had a very nice idea, actually, of how to, to use that afternoon, is by um, kind of segueing different people into each other. Well, it's going to be a piece of cake for us now, isn't it, really? Dod a doddle. Yes, yeah. <laughs> But maybe, you know, I'm always open. I love working with other people. You know, it keeps it alive for me. It keeps things moving on as well. It makes you, when you, every time you work with somebody else, it makes you think differently about how you work on your own. And that's why I like to, you know, spread my wings, I think. Yes, that's right. Brings the chance element back, doesn't Definitely. it? Definitely. Doesn't it? Knocks you out of your stride, which is a good thing. There you go. I'll just end with a quote by Pascal, which comes from the notebook. 
which is kind of almost applicable. The last proceeding of reason is to recognise that there is an infinity of things beyond it, which is rather nice, isn't it? Very nice. Good old Pascal. What would we do without him?
That was the last piece in our session with Rothko, who are Mark Beasley, Michael Donnelly, basses, and Ben Page, Djembe, playing with Roger Eno, who's there playing piano, and Celeste. That one was called Slowing Up, and very many thanks to all of them for coming in. We really enjoyed that yeah, session. Yeah, and a big thank you also for them for rising to the occasion and giving us that perfect Radio 3 moment with the uh, quotation from Pascal. We particularly enjoyed that <laughs> as well. Well done, guys. Right, now, if you would like our playlist, you can get it in the usual ways by email, mixing.it at bbc.co.uk. CFAX, page 652, or you can write to us, mixing it, BBC Broadcasting House, London, W1A1AA. Then there is the website, bbc.co.uk forward slash radio 3. Uh, playlist is up there. You can go to the message board, add your comments, and you can listen to the programme for a whole week on the website. And we leave you tonight with a track from an album which I wish we could play in its entirety. It's by Fog, which is the alias of Andrew Broder, art punk rocker turned hip-hop DJ and sort of country poet. It's not easy to sound weird, soulful and sad at the same time, the way Fog does, so please listen carefully. We're back next week with an all-CD edition. Until then, good night. Good night. <coughs> Believe It by Fog, ending tonight's Mixing It, which was presented by Mark Russell and Robert Sandel, and the producer was Felix Carey.